Well, I got another unit shipped into me. This time it's a Toshiba DVR620 VCR with a DVD recorder in it. And they're telling me that the tape won't stay in the VHS portion. And I believe they're telling me that the DVD player does not work as well. So just doing some initial checks, the first thing I noticed is I tried to spin the cylinder motor. And it's very bound up. We may have to look at the bushings or the bearings. I think that one does have bearings. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is just go ahead and power it up. And I get a display. I see the fan runs back here. For the heck of it, let's just go ahead and put a tape in it and see what it does. Now they said it spits the tape out immediately. So power on. Oh, it's trying. Maybe just running that cylinder by hand was enough to free it up. I don't know. Doesn't sound good though. Oh, it's slowing down. And it just stopped. Yeah, it's it's definitely bound up. May have a bad bearing. I don't know if we're gonna be able to take care of that or not, but let's go ahead and pop open the DVD. Oh, it does actually open. Well, let's pop a disc in it and see if it's going to try to read it. Well, VHS won't play, DVD won't play. Let's go ahead and pop the top on the DVD and take a look at the optical pickup and see if it might just need to be cleaned. Well, the optical pickup doesn't look that bad, but I'll go ahead and give it a quick cleaning and see if we get any change in our results. All right, well, let's give it another try and see what happens. All right, well, I tore the power supply out of this unit and ESR'd all the capacitors. They checked absolutely perfectly. I went ahead and checked the DVD unit and I found nine bad capacitors, nine bad surface mount capacitors. There was a 330 that ESR'd about eight to 10 ohms, really bad. Two 100s that ESR'd in the five ohm range, definitely bad. And a bunch of 47 microfarad capacitors that ESR between five and about 30 ohms. So nine altogether got changed. Let's button this thing back up and see if it makes any difference. And as you may or may not know, I am not a fan of surface mount capacitors. I will try to use standard electrolytics in their place anytime possible. As you can see, I've got most of them folded over there. Uh, the footprint is about the same as long as you've got room on the board height-wise. I've got more than enough room. I've probably got an extra three millimeters even above the largest capacitor right here. Uh, I did not have a 330. I had to replace it with a 470 as you can see right there. So let's go ahead and get this reassembled back together and hopefully we get favorable results. Okay, back together. Let's put a disc in it. See if it's going to try to read the disc this time. All right, it knows it's a DVD. It read the table of contents. Let me go ahead and hit play. I don't have a monitor connected right now, but I do see the time is elapsing on the counter on the front of this unit. So that's very good. So I got the DVD player running. I'll just have to hook up a monitor and make sure I get actual video. So next I need to tackle the cylinder motor and see if we can maybe tear it apart and oil the bushings or relieve some of the pressure. We'll cross that bridge very shortly. Okay, so on some of these units, they had a stationary shaft, and then the bearings were actually part of the cylinder assembly. So I'm going to go ahead and just pull the motor off of the top. We'll take a look down in there and see what we see. Uh, 
I've got the rotor and the stator out of the way. And now I can go ahead and remove this Allen set screw right here. So I've got a 1.5 millimeter Allen wrench right here. I'm just gonna go ahead and loosen that. That should lift right off the top. Next, the entire thing should slide off the shaft. And boy, I don't know if I can get to that bottom bearing if I had to. Uh, there's gonna be a shim here. And I don't see an extra shim on the motor whatsoever. Well, the bearings actually seem pretty good right now. I wonder if the pressure was just too much on them. Yeah, it does look like that bottom bearing might be having a problem. The bearings are perfectly fine. There's something in the rotary transformer where there may not be enough clearance. I wonder if we can clean that rotary transformer a little bit. Well, it's almost like there was some glue left behind on here, some rubbery glue. I just wiped it off with my finger. And the same thing on this side, I could feel like particles of, well, I'd have to say like rubber as I'm wiping this. And check this out now. Look at that. Turns as free as can be. So I think I'll go ahead and uh, give it just a quick wipe down with some acetone on both sides and reassemble it and hopefully we will be good to go. All right, so I'm just gonna very carefully go around this with a paper towel soaked with some acetone. Definitely got some crud off of there. And we'll do the same thing over here. Yeah, I don't know what was on there. I'm just gonna try to wipe anything off. I've got a little acid brush here just to get any fuzzies off of either side. Working absolutely perfect. Let's go ahead and get the motor reassembled now and we'll put a tape in it and see if we can get it to play. Keep in mind when you reassemble this unit, you want to make sure that you have the hole lined up with the hole in the cylinder motor. If you rotate this 180 degrees, uh, all kinds of strange things happen, like on that JVC SVHS machine I worked on here uh, a couple of months ago. I don't know if you remember that or not, but uh, it, it was a strange bird, I'll tell you that. So now I should be able to very carefully rotate this. Now by rotating the stator assembly, it's going to let me adjust the head switching position and it needs to switch at a fairly precise location. It's supposed to switch six and a half lines before vertical blanking. I unfortunately don't have an underscan monitor. I do have a scope. I could probably find the head switching pulse and the video pulse. I've been doing this for almost 40 years now and I've got a pretty good idea where it needs to be just by looking at the video. I've been very successful in doing head switching adjustments just by watching the video. So next, let's go ahead and fire it up, put a tape in it, and see if it wants to go. Definitely spins much freer at this point, so I'm very happy with that. So since I had my grubby paws all over this drum assembly, I'm gonna go ahead and give it the cotton swab and acetone treatment get my fingerprints off. I'll wipe off the heads real quick. And I'm sure someone's going to comment, you can't use cotton swabs to clean video heads. You can if you know what you're doing. Like I said, I've been doing this since the early 80s, almost 40 years now, cleaning heads. And I've had many, many people tell me, you can't use cotton swabs to clean the drum and the heads. And I'm here to say, yes, I can. So when I'm cleaning the heads, I use this area of the cotton swab way up here, not the bunched up area, but I try to clean the heads with the smallest amount of cotton swab as possible. Well, I don't know if you can see it, but it's absolutely spotless at this point. So let's fire it up, put a tape in it, see if it loads, see if it plays. Power on. Select the VCR, tape going in.
play. Counter is counting. Let me hook up a monitor and see if we get video. Okay, here's the monitor. Let's hit play. We've got audio. We've got video. Now I'm going to go ahead and adjust the position of the motor to adjust the head switching pulse. So I'm going to go ahead and if you look at the bottom of the screen, you can see it's switching way, way before the end of the track, and that's not good. All right, I think that's good right there. Picture looks good. It's very steady. Uh, let's go ahead and pop a six-hour tape in it and make sure that it plays a SLP tape, because that's an SP tape that I was playing. So this will be an SLP tape, six-hour tape. It looks absolutely perfect. No noise in the picture. Even for a six hour tape, it actually looks pretty darn good. So now let's go ahead and verify that the DVD actually plays a picture. Sorry if the monitor is askew, but I just did a real quick job of pointing my camera at the monitor. There it is, up and playing. The DVD works, the VCR works. I believe this customer is going to be very happy. Nine surface mount capacitors replaced on the DVD board and remove some gummy goo on the cylinder motor. Uh, I just gotta go ahead and pull the stator back out and tighten that, that Allen set screw. And I think we're gonna be good. All right, so I'm going to very carefully remove these screws. I didn't really tighten them too terribly tight. Sorry if my hand is right in the way. And we're going to have to take these off as well. They can just live here next to the magnet for now. So here's what I was talking about. This hole right here has to line up with this hole in the cylinder itself. All right, all tightened up. And it turns very freely now. It's really hard to even get the screws back in it. It turns so freely. So I tightened that first one up and I backed it off to leave a little bit of play so the second screw can index correctly. All right, let's give it one final try. All right, here we go, power on. Make sure the drum spins up. It does, it sounds great. I don't have you pointed at the monitor right now, but I'll go ahead and hit play and we should hear something. And we do. I've got video on my monitor. Well, that's it. The Toshiba DVR 620 up and going. So a little bit of gunk in the cylinder motor rotary transformer. Some bad capacitors over here in the DVD mechanism. Got those replaced. The DVD is up and running. The VCR is up and running and hopefully this customer will be very happy. So once again, I wanna give my sincere thank you to those who have supported my channel with a donation via PayPal or by having me repair your unit like this one. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to my channel and liking this video. It really does help my channel grow. You can follow me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, at NorCal715. You can email me, norcal715videos at gmail.com. Go ahead and leave me a question, a comment, a concern down below. I try to read all the comments and respond when I have time. Remember, with your help, we can try to keep these things out of the landfill, out of the recycle bin, and out of the e-waste facility. Everybody, thanks for watching this video. I really appreciate it. Have a great day. Bye-bye.